Hello again, everyone. This is the first lecture when we create our first uh, server instances on AWS. So we will go to aws.amazon.com. And what you should do right now, you should create an AWS account if you don't have it, OK? I assume that you are created the AWS account and you log in. And I will start from there. OK, because I have already have an account. I'll click on sign in. So this is my AWS account. <clears throat> AWS has a lot of services, but what we need and what we are using in this course, mostly we will look at EC2. So you can search for it here. EC2. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud, and click on it. It will take you to here, OK? But for you, you won't see this, because you don't have uh, any instance right now, if you created the account just now. And on the uh, top right corner, you can see this n.virginia, maybe uh, for you, it's not in .virginia, maybe it's something else. But what's important here is to know that the choosing, choosing this region, it will affect the speed of your website uh, or your server from the country that you want uh, to use. For example, if I am in US, of course, it's wise more wise to choose the server, the region uh, from US. And of course, if you're in Asia, for example, we have a server in Canada, Europe, Middle East, South America. <clears throat> so these are the actual servers for AWS in those region. <clears throat> so of course, it will affect your the speed, the the first uh, launching of your website or application, for example, there is a website that you can check uh, the uh, millisecond it will took for the server to reach your region. <coughs> AWS. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> As you can see, there is this site called ping.psa.fun. Open this and come down. And you want to see a report, click on it. Right now, you can select your country. For example, I live in Iraq. Click on it. Huh. As you can see, it will show me the, the millisecond, the latency from that region to my country. So if I have an application or website that just specific for my country, uh, of course, I will choose the, the one which have less latency. So right now for Iraq, uh, as you can see, Middle East, Bahrain, is the perfect choice. After that, the Frankfurt. After that, you can see it's uh, Milan. And goes on and on. So for Iraq, if I choose, for example, the US one right now, and I'm in, of course, in US, <clears throat> the latency, it will be around, for example, 200 to 265 so it's a lot for a website and it's better to be uh, less than 80 but right now it's just for uh, the purpose of this course I will choose the N Virginia and uh, as you can see we are in instances you can see the instances if you have and what we are doing we will click on launch instances instances here mean the the server, the, the actual server that you create. And when I click on it, it will show me this. 
these are the uh, operating system that you can choose to have it on your uh, server and as you can see there is Amazon Linux, Mac OS, Red Hat, SUS Linux but for our courses we will use uh, Ubuntu Server 20.04 uh, so uh, maybe this version right now for you it's different but uh, choose the latest version of uh, Ubuntu and before I click on select you can see this check boxes <clears throat> there's uh, this radio button and as you can see there are 60 bit 64 bit uh, x86 and 64 bit uh, ARM version so what's the difference the difference is that the ARM version is much newer and cost less for you because the ARM uh, architecture uh, consume less power that's why the most server right now are transitioning from x86 to ARM version so right now we are choosing the 64-bit uh, ARM version and click on select it will take you to this page you can see a lot of options here uh, this is called a family so for example you have T4G and for T4G you have a type for example T4G nano micro small medium large x large 2x large and after that you have for example C6G so they are different uh, you can search for it for the difference between for example T4G and C6G there are small differences between those uh, server and for use cases but we will uh, create uh, T4G for our purpose now and <clears throat> for the pricing it will affect your pricing of course so uh, how you know the price of the server for example monthly cost or something like that we can search for AWS pricing calculator something like that search for it on Google and it will show you the calculator.aws so it will took us to AWS website and create estimate of course it's, this one is estimate uh, but <coughs> it's a good estimate EC2 configure as you can see I am uh, clicking on this one uh, this one T4G T4G micro it has two virtual CPU and one uh, gigabyte of uh, memory memory means the RAM uh, for example your computer has RAM so this one is one gigabyte of RAM and and the region of course it will affect the price and for we are in in Virginia so I'm gonna choose Mm, sorry you can see in Virginia change region I have uh, I will choose two CPU and one gigabyte of RAM and it will show me T4G micro of course we are selecting T4G micro and with 30 gigabyte of storage how much it will cost it will cost you 6.87 us dollar per month so this one is total monthly cost okay of course if you increase the uh, storage as you can see the price of the uh, block storage pricing is different from the ec2 uh, pricing as you can see the uh, the price of one gigabyte it will cost you uh, 0.1 US dollar so uh, multiply by 50 gigabyte it will cost you five dollar a month so the most price right now for if I choose 50 uh, gigabyte of storage it will be the storage not the server itself so I'm choosing the 30 gigabyte so let's go back to our choosing the server and this one is what we need click on the next configuration instance and here configure instant detail we will not change anything right now 
mm, click on next add storage here by default it will show you 8 gigabyte but we will change it to 30 and click on next on add tag here we will not add tag next click on the config security group <coughs> Here, as you can see, we have just SSH. SSH stands for Secure Shell. So um, if you see this, so right now we can access our server after, of course, we create the server. Uh, we can access the server with SSH. So from, our, from the terminal or with using an application called Putty from our Windows or from the terminal of your Mac, if you have a Mac, you can access the server with a key, uh, which call SSH. But of course, we want to access our server later when we create the website through the browser. So we will choose add. We will click on Add Rule, and here we will choose HTTP, HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, uh, for accessing from the browser and also HTTPS, the secure one. Later on, we will create the SSL for our website. So if you have uh, SSL, so you should have, of course, the HTTPS access to your server. So right now, we just have this three type of permission or secure security group to access our server, SSH, HTTP, HTTPS. Click on review and launch. That will show you the review of our server, of course, T4G Micro with two CPU, one gigabyte of RAM, storage, and everything is fine. Click on Launch. Here is really important. It will ask you to uh, create a key, or if you have a key already, uh, using your key. So I will choose Create a New Key Pair, and click on RSA. I will call it uh, first cloud key what's important here is don't lose this key because later you can't uh, create the key or download it again as you can see it will show you a note you have to download the private key file dot pen file before you can continue store it in a secure and accessible location you will not be able to download the file again after it's created so for the first time when we create and download as you can see i downloaded this key and later when i click on launch instant i won't be able to download this key again so if you lose the key you will not be able to access your server again done launch instance so right now it's saying launch status your instance are now launching view instance Ta -da. as you can see this one our instance right now running t4g micro initializing so for the first time it will uh, show you initializing uh, we will uh, wait till initializing will complete and here when I click on it, as you can see, you can see the IP address of the server and the ID and everything. And I can name it, of course. I will call it my first cloud. So after a while, as you can see, our server is running and initializing is completed. So it's ready for use. So in this step, what you are going to do, uh, download a software, a program called Putty. This step is just for Windows. Putty, as you can see, click on it. Download Putty here. There are versions, of course, this one. 64 bit, uh, this one is for ARM, this one is uh, 32 bit. I'm gonna choose this one. Click on it, run, next, 
Next, install. Yes. Of course, later on, I will do the accessing the server with uh, Mac OS also. Finish. And right now, we need another software because uh, we can't use our key, which we downloaded from the AWS, the .pem, right away inside the putty. We uh, must convert it. So what we are going to use, we will use uh, something called putty key generator. And when we come down here, as you can see, there is a putty gen. We will download that one also. Click on it, run. Now it's opened. So right now we can choose our key, which we downloaded. But before that, let me uh, create a folder and get everything right. So I go to uh, my computer here. I'll create a new folder called cloud key. I will put my .pem key, which we generated, inside this folder, cloud key. So this is my key. And we will go to the putty key generator and click on load. And here we should choose our folder, which we Store the key, cloud key, and for this, click on all to see your key and open. This is fully imported. Okay. And what we need to do, save private key. Click on that. Are you sure you want to save this key without a yeah? And it will tell us where to store it and store it in the same. So, but we call it first cloud key, of course, and save. Ta-da! As you can see, this one is not .pem, okay? This one actually is different fo uh, format. It's .ppk, so it's converted. Right now, what we need to do is open the putty, okay? not the putty gen, the putty. And this is the uh, UI of the putty. As you can see, uh, you, you must insert your IP address, the IP address of the instance which we created here. Click on it and copy this and paste it here. And for the key, we of course, we will access this server with a key. And as you can see, it will show you the connection type with port 22. Port 22 is, of course, SSH. And you remember when we uh, generated this instance, we have a security group with SSH. And of course, right now, uh, also, you can see this security group here. Come down and network security group. I have a, a different security group, of course, because uh, I have uh, more instance <laughs> and from your instance also you can see this security as you can see when I click on my instance and come down to security group ID you can see we have uh, port 22 of course this one is SSH okay let's get back to the uh, putty here, you should click on SSH, open it, on Oath, open it. And as you can see, you can uh, choose your private key, which we created with PuttyGen, this one, .ppk, open. Okay, so right now, we choose the key, and let's go back to the session, and uh, because 
uh, each time you open the, uh, the putty, you should do this step again. So that's why there's uh, something called save it session. So we can save our session. I will call it my first cloud and save it. So for the next time, just click double click on the my uh, first cloud and it will open the terminal for you. So when I click open, it will show me this alert. Uh, what uh, this alert tell me? Uh, it say the server's host key is not cached in the registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. The server is a set key fingerprint is that. So of course we know that this is our server and we say accept. And it will show me login as. Of course the first uh, thing when we create the uh, Ubuntu server, uh, we will have uh, a user Ubuntu. So we will write Ubuntu. Click enter, authentication, ta-da. So right now I'm inside this instance, this server. So this is just our Ubuntu server. We are inside it. So if I close this, it will say, are you sure you want to close the session? Okay. And when we come back to putty, just double click on it this and it will say you open to Ta -da! and we are logged in through our server so you ju you don't need to uh, for example type a password something like that because we have a key uh, that uh, with ssh that's why we uh, can access our server very easily and right now what we need to do the first time when we access our server, we should check for updates and update everything before we install anything, okay? So uh, these are the Linux command, which I am right uh, typing now, sudo. Sudo mean uh, like a root user or admin user, sudo mean that. That's why we uh, write down or type sudo every time um, before we execute a command inside a Linux. Okay. Let's change the font for you. Ta -da. Now it's much better, of course, for you guys. <clears throat> so right now I'll write down sudo apt get update. So this command just check for updates. So it's not updating anything. It's just for check. Done. And now write sudo apt get upgrade. This time it will update. So it asks me, uh, do you want to continue? Yes or no? Of course, uh, click on Y, enter done so our servers around now is ready so in the next lesson we will uh, installing and configuring our server hello again everyone uh, in this lesson we will install and configuring the server i will use a common software stack a group of different tools that work together for a particular purpose known as the lamp stack which stands for, of course, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. I will use the WordPress CMS for websites. Building example, many people wrongly think that WordPress is simple uh, blogging services. Uh, they are thinking of WordPress.com, which is built on the WordPress software, but is only one example of service built on WordPress. Though using WordPress CMS, you can create your own alternatives to WordPress.com and any other website or service you can think of. The WordPress CMS makes life so much simpler for uh, website building by taking care of all the boring detailed things like 
uh, secure login into the website backend, create a new user, connect it to a database, and uh, sorting information on it, send a newsletter, blogging, etc. There are good alternative to WordPress such as Joomla and Django WordPress and Joomla are written in PHP, uh, the P in the lamp, uh, while Django is written in Python. The language CMS is written makes a difference since you, you would use the language to add any programmatic features to your website or to customize the user experience. There is no need to worry too much about the language, however, since unlike human languages, once you learn a computer language and become good at it, you can learn your way around the essential parts of another language in a matter of minutes. So, installing LAMP. You the following two commands to install the LAMP. sudo apt get install task cell click on enter oh, okay I write down the apt wrong so it's not apt just uh, click on the arrow on the keyboard arrow down and up it will take you to the uh, command you type apt okay do you want to continue yes of course done so we installed uh, something called task cell and right now we do sudo task cell install lamp server hmm i told installing the lamp that's why it will show us this And of course, it will install the correct version for the ARM, as you can see, the ARM64 version. <coughs> install PHP uh, 7.4. Done. The lamp installed right now. So, Maybe you ask yourself why there's this command uh, whenever we want to do something and we should write down the sudo. So this command is uh, actually for your safety, for you don't accidentally uh, write, uh, type a command and, for example, delete or do something with your server. You should uh, uh, type sudo before each command. That's why they have sudo. Okay, right now the LAMP uh, server installed. Let's check uh, on the browser. As you can see, this is my server. Copy the IP and paste it in browser. Ta-da! As you can see, we have right now Apache 2 Ubuntu default page. So this means that our server is now running the Apache. So everything is fine. If you see this page hello again everyone so we installed the lab server and everything is right now is fine and working uh, as it should what we need to do uh, right now installing the WordPress inside our server <clears throat> so let's get started first I will clear my terminal okay Right now, I will go to cd, cd is the Linux command, of course, uh, to it mean change directory. We will go to this folder called var www.html, click enter. Uh, <clears throat> now type ls to show you what's inside this uh, folder. Inside this folder, html, just index.html, which is this uh, page actually as you can see located at var www.html in the html so this page is that file inside our server and right now we will install wordpress here in our server <coughs> sudo wget 
wget meaning getting the file from the web http slash slash wordpress dot org latest tar dot gz let's make it ISIS. okay enter hmm so Type ls again. Huh. As you can see, we have a file here called latest.tar.gz. So uh, this is a gz file. So it's zip it. We need to extract it. sudo tar xz vf space latest.tar gz click on enter and this will just extract in the like for example if you have a dot zip or dot rar file inside your computer when you extract it it's like that click on ls type ls and as you can see the in uh, it was wordpress this folder inside the in this uh, tar gz file so the WordPress, as you can see, the color is blue. It means that it's folder, but the file, as you can see, it's uh, white. And uh, of course, the GZ uh, uh, file format is red. So right now, we don't need uh, this one anymore. Uh, so let's delete it. sudo rm means remove, remove latest. So when I type late, uh, just the late, and uh, click on tab on my computer, it will complete for me. And click on enter. Now it's removed. So be aware of the sudo uh, rm command because uh, it's not like in the Windows when you uh, delete something, it will show you a pop-up say, uh, do you want to delete it or not? Yes or not. Now it's gone. If I type ls. <clears throat> There is nothing here. Of course, ls uh, uh, is a command to show you what's inside the folder. <clears throat> and there are some packages maybe you need to install uh, for the PHP to work uh, correctly or for the WordPress actually. So first type sudo apt get update. And then sudo apt get install php 7.4 gd lib ssh to php. Click on enter. Huh. So there's no package with that name. So right now we have the WordPress folder. Uh, but what we need to do is uh, creating a database for our WordPress and also a database user, of course. So <clears throat> write down sudo mysql minus u root, root mean root user. Click on enter. And as you can see, I just entered and this changed to mysql. So right now, uh, I'm inside the MySQL of my server, okay? With this command, sudo MySQL minus u, it means user root. Uh, we don't have a password for root user right now. That's why uh, it doesn't show us uh, type your password or uh, permission denied because we didn't, didn't uh, create a password for it. Right now, I'm creating a database. And I will call it WordPress DB. Enter and create user. I will call it WordPress user at localhost. 
identified by I should type a password so this password is for our uh, WordPress user of course this password <clears throat> you should remember it but right now I am typing something very easy but for you please please uh, create a really secure <clears throat> and complex password for us so right now I am just uh, typing Arman one two three four five six just that so it's really simple password of course never do that <laughs> click on enter and grant all privileges on WordPress DB dot star to WordPress user at localhost. <clears throat> so this line, uh, of course, the first line we created a database called WordPress DB, and in this line we created a user called WordPress user with this password. And in this line, we are saying that uh, this user can have all privileges for the for this database. So this user can access everything for this database. That's this line. Tell us. Enter. And then you should uh, flush privileges. enter then exit exit the mysql so we exit the mysql and came back to the server again <clears throat> right now we have a database okay hello again so right now we uh, created a database on user for our database now we are we should configure our wordpress so uh, as you can see, our session is expired. It will show you a pop-up. So we should uh, go back to Putty. Uh, double click on this. Ubuntu. Sorry. Ubuntu. OK. Uh, we will go to slash cd slash bar www.html. And we have WordPress, so we will go inside the WordPress folder, CD WordPress. And if we do an LS here, as you can see, we have a lot of files and folders here. Uh, what we need, what's uh, interested for us, but first let me uh, change the font of our terminal. Let's go to appearance, change. Sorry for this. Let's just 20, apply. Ta da! OK. This looks better. Right now, uh, I'm inside the WordPress folder. As you can see, we have a file called wp config sample.php. So it's, it's called sample because we should have a file with wp, con, WP config but uh, without this so this is just uh, for you so we will do copy of uh, this fold this file sudo cp cp mean copy wp config sample.php we will copy it here just here so same place but we will change the name to wp config.php enter and do ls again and right now wp config we have wp config so we copied the 
uh, WP config sample to this one WP config. Right now we need to open this uh, file. So we will use something called nano. Nano is the text editor. Like for example, in your Windows you have Notepad. In Linux we have uh, Nano, Vim, and uh, much more. But we will use Nano for this. sudo nano wp config.php. Enter. And this is the file when it's opened. And come down. And as you can see here, there is this one uh, called db name database name of course you remember we created database with wordpress db and here the, the user which have access to the database wordpress user and here the password for the user of course so it was rman one two three four five six then what we need to do if you come down as you can see here you see these uh, define but the the value is put your unique phrase here let's say that so what we need to do is delete all these line and go to the uh, WordPress site and copy uh, that files to here. <coughs> so you can uh, click on Command and K to cut these. Okay. And what we need to do, go to the browser and write down the api.wordpress.org slash secret minus key slash 1.1 slash salt. Ta -da. It will show us this definition with keys. So copy them and come here right click on it and it will paste it directly here okay then what you need to do control x but when you do control x it will say save modified buffer it means do you want to save it type y yes and then enter and right now we need to create another file. WordPress uses a type of Apache configuration file called .htaccess file that controls the way Apache process particular directories. Okay, so this new file which we will create is for that. Your WordPress installation need a .htaccess for certain tasks such as setting up pretty permalinks for this reason it's important to create the file so but first we will go and visit the url codex.wordpress.org slash ht access enter hmm. so this is uh, redirect us to this okay click on this as you can see this is the basic WordPress HD access we can copy this come back but let's first create our file so we can sudo nano dot HD access enter and it will open up the .sg access and just right click paste that control x y enter if i type ls i can't see the .sg access because 
the, uh, in Linux, when we have a, uh, a file with a dot, uh, uh, you can't see it this way. So we should type ls minus a, ls space minus a. And as you can see, this is the file which we created, ht access. And right now, we need to change the file ownership so that Apache can modify the file when necessary. So we will change the ownership of the ht access file with this command, sudo chown ww minus data colon ww minus data name of the file enter done right now we configure the uh, wordpress and we are ready to go to the next step welcome back again as you can see when i'm going to our ip address for the server and you should try it yourself of course uh, it will direct us to this page again, so nothing changes for us right now. What we should do, of course, the session is closed again. So putty Okay. What we should do right now, we should tell the uh, Apache to redirect us to the WordPress installation, not this uh, index.html. First, let's change the setting for you guys. Okay, we will go to this folder cd slash etc slash apache and here inside this folder just type ls and you can see we have a lot of folders here what we need site available cd site available ls here as you can see we have two files but we need to access this file zero zero so sudo nano zero zero enter <clears throat> as you can see we have document root var ww html so i need to change it to the wordpress folder name WordPress. Okay. And that's it. Control X, Y, enter. But right now, what we should do, we should uh, restart the Apache. So sudo service Apache to restart. Enter. And it will restart the Apache. Right now, go to your uh, IP address and reload. Ta-da! As you can see, the WordPress is running and it asks us to uh, initialize the WordPress, install it. So the site name uh, will be Arman Hadi, my name. Hmm. The username, uh, it will be Arman for myself, the username for the WordPress. And of course, the password, uh, I recommend a strong password here. <clears throat> then your email. Then click on install WordPress. It will ask us to save, no. login. Ta -da. Right now we have our WordPress website. 
it's fully functional, it's working properly, but be aware if you uh, do not uh, correctly uh, type the password and database name and uh, the, the the user for the database inside the WP config, you will not get to this step. Before we are going, we go to furthermore, I want to tell you uh, something. For example, if you uh, get to an error and something like that, uh, how you can find the uh, errors. So how you test your uh, WordPress installation or the server, actually. So this, uh, this debugging and testing is not just for WordPress. If you have any problem with uh, PHP and Apache, you can uh, do these steps. So if you have any error, we will go to this directory, cd bar log apache2 enter and ls as you can see we have a lot of uh, log file three log file actually and you can just nano error dot log huh. as you can see we don't have a lot of things right now because uh, we didn't have error when we install it and uh, do stuff but if you have an error uh, here, it will, if you have error in, on your server, it will show the error here for you, okay? <coughs> and this is really important. This will help you when you have an error with your server, for example, installing a plugin to your uh, WordPress site or anything else, and you get an error in, uh, in the browser or you can't access uh, certain thing, you can check this file for example let's uh, make an error for ourselves i will go to uh, bar ww html wordpress and sudo nano wp config.php do this or this or something like this, okay? And save it, and sudo and let's go to the website as you can see, when I go to our IP it gives us this error so I will go to var log apache2 and nano the error log of course we have error as you can see so it tell us syntax error unexpected forward slash Expen expecting end of file var wwhtml wp config so it's really amazing for you if you have any error and you don't know uh, it won't show you anything inside the browser to tell you what's the error so you can check it here so we will go to var wwhtml uh, wordpress sudo nano wp config dot php and we come here remove this line pull the x enter and reload it tada working so this is the actually this is the interface of the website because it has a default theme the wordpress and you can click on this and it will take you here so this is the dashboard for the WordPress. You can see posters, media pages, comments, appearance, in appearance, the theme, 
and you can uh, change the theme and install theme or buy a theme from another website and upload it here. Hello again. So right now we need to uh, configure WordPress file permissions. So Apache should be made the owner of the directory that contains your WordPress installation. Otherwise, you will run into permission denied error. So let's change that. We'll go to www folder. So we will go to the www folder and we will do this command here sudo chone ww minus data colon ww minus data space minus capital R and this one. So before I click enter, I want to explain to you each part of this command. So this command will uh, chone. It means change the ownership. So this is stand for change ownership. The www minus data is the name of the Apache user. Okay, and the chone. Is, is of course a Linux utility uses it to change the uh, file permission or ownership and after that we will we are telling that each folder and each subfolder and files inside the WW which contain the HTML and inside the HTML there is a ton of file from WordPress changing all permission of all of them so that the Apache is the owner and click enter next we will run the following command inside the same directory of course for proper read and write permission setting so sudo find find what find the dot space minus type d it means directory <coughs> execute chmod command chmod it means change mod so 755 space curly braces space backward slash and semicolon and press enter after this we will do this command sudo find sudo find dot space minus type space f f mean files minus exec mod space 644 space curly braces space backward slash semicolon enter so this one is for changing the uh, read and write permission for the folders directories and this one is for changing permission for the files so 755 uh, what does this stand for, uh, let me open up a notepad for you. So of course this course uh, is not about this and this is the permission uh, inside the Linux. Uh, let me show you what is the permission. So I will uh, go inside the WordPress, inside the HTML and WordPress. And I will do ls minus l. So as you can see, 
these are the name of the files and folders and these are the ownership of the user and group and these are the permission okay so as you can see we have this one is file the file has this permission what does that mean what does this mean this mean <coughs> the first r mean read and then the w mean write and after that we have another read and another read so this one came from the command which we executed before sorry this command the sickest mean the r w the four mean just the r the other four mean dot r also so this one is for the user access it means the apache the linux user the linux user can read and write the file but group just read and other it means uh, everyone which access your website they just read they can't uh, write anything so this is for security and what does this r and w came from it came from uh, actually binary bit one one and zero because this one uh, this minus it means uh, actually it's execute the echoes but we don't have that so it is zero so in a binary the first one is one so we don't have one because it's zero and the second one is two and the third one is four so this one is two four and it mean six okay so let me separate it but the first uh, the first minus which you see here the first minus it means uh, this one is file because we have d this mean uh, this one is directory okay this is for this one and for second part for the group so the group has one zero zero so this one is one zero and so it just have the four so it's four and for this one also one zero zero four so it's six hundred and forty four so that's why we when we type this command mode we type it uh, 644 it means for the uh, user for the apache user give them a write and uh, read and write permission but for group just read for other just read i hope you understand this uh, and it's fun to know that and also in the uh, of course linux uh, courses and permission security you should know uh, about this stuff for example, if you have this one, x, so it means this is 1, and 1 plus 4, it will be 5. And for example, if this one has w x, so it means 1 for this one, 2 for this one, and 4 for this one. Because you know, the binary, uh, it's like this. Uh, for example, uh, eight four two one. So it's like this. And for example, sixteen. That's binary. Yeah, it will go. And sixteen thirty two sixty four one hundred twenty eight, like that. So it, if it has R W X, it will be one one one. So this one will be. Uh, 1 plus 2 it will be 3 3 plus 4 it will be 7 okay uh, 
So it means that each part has a three bit. Okay, so this is three bit, three bit, three bit binary. And uh, each bit has its own uh, permission for this one is execute and this one is uh, write and this one is read. But when you do a ch mode command, change mode command, you will change the permission like this. Okay, so it's much easier if you used to it. You don't need to think a lot about it or to write a long uh, text. You just write six four four. It means uh, the permission. It means this permission. Hello again, everyone. So in this lesson, we will set it up a static IP address for our server. So by default, AWS give your server a temporary IP address. As you can see here, this is a temporary IP address that lets you enter your server and do the necessary installation procedure. The IP address is the only good as long as your instance is running so uh, guys this ip is just good if you if your instance is right now is running that's good but when you for example restart the server or uh, stop the server and reboot it or change the instance type this ip will change okay so you this IP totally change and you can connect to the server with this IP. And the bad thing is, uh, for example, if you have a domain name uh, with this IP, so whenever you restart the server or change the instance, you should uh, change the IP address for the domain name, the DNS and those stuff. Also may uh, another uh, other errors occur. What we What we will going to do, Amazon has something called uh, static IP, uh, called elastic IP. Of course, this is static IP. And offer them for free for your install to run. If you stop your instance, the IP address become unattached to your instance, but you don't do not lose it. After starting your instance again, you can reassociate the IP address with your instance so that your site continue to be accessible. So right now, what we should uh, do is come here and go to Elastic IP. And here, click on Allocate Elastic IP Address. And it will show us this and cr uh, click on locate. It will create an IP address for us. But this IP is not attached to our instance right now. So click allocate again. <clears throat> uh, sorry, click on the... Select the IP address action. Associate Elastic IP Address. It will take us here. And you can see here, choose an instance. And this is my instance, my first cloud. Click on it. And click on Associate. Done. Right now, go to your instance, the IP address, change it to this instance. Reload. As you can see, so right now, if our server restarted or changed the instance and anything like that, or stop the instant and uh, then start it again, because you can do that, of course, you can stop instant reboot and maybe sometime there's an issue you need to reboot, your IP will be this, so it won't change. But right now, we are facing a problem in our website. Let's go to this IP. I am waiting for my WordPress website. 
but as, as you can see, there is nothing. What's the problem? We will fix it in the next lesson. Hello again. As you can see, our website crashed and uh, right now it loads like this. It means that the WordPress can't uh, access the uh, styling or CSS files or maybe another other files also. Because right now, WordPress, some, some part of WordPress, actually referring to the uh, previous IP address. So inside it, there's a value which uh, saved the IP address for the previous uh, IP. So we, we need to change that. But right now, I cannot access the, for example, WP admin to, to access my, for example, dashboard, admin dashboard, or change stuff there. I cannot do anything like that. So what we need to do? We need to go uh, to Putty. But right now, the uh, password for this one, the uh, sorry, the IP address for this one is not the new IP address. As you can see, it's changed the uh, IP address. Okay, so we copy this, this IP and paste it here, but we need also do it, go to the SSH, and of course it's the same key. Okay, go into the session and save this. My first cloud new IP. I will save it by this name, open course accept Ubuntu done we are inside our server again what we should do uh, we should change that value inside the WordPress database which is the old IP address to the new IP address so I will go to my SQL minus u user WordPress user of course for uh, WordPress DB minus p p mean password enter and it asked me to enter the password, it was to enter. Right now I'm inside the database. <coughs> and what once we are here, we can type a MySQL command, uh, like we did before, of course. We change we need to change that IP address. So this is the my SQL command, of course, update WP options set option value equal to HTTP. I should uh, now the new IP address, which is this one. Fifteen dot seventeen dot one two six dot one six eight where option underscore value equal HTTP, we need the old IP address. This was the old IP address. 
18.212.12.6. Ta-da! So what does this mean? This means update. Update the WP option. Set option value to this where the option value was this. So this is the field inside the database, uh, a row, uh, a cell inside our database. Uh, at the first time, it was this, and but now we want the value to be updated to this one. Okay, enter. Right now, going to our uh, website and uh, new IP address again. Ta-da! Everything seen works great and fine now again because that field changed inside the WordPress. So remember, if you uh, change things inside the database for the WordPress, maybe your website will crash and you can't access the dashboard again. So you need to change those stuff inside your server like this. And right now, Exit, exit in the MySQL, of course. Uh, let me show you something else. Let me show you the I'm going back to the database. <coughs> Select it, this is MySQL command, if you know MySQL, from WP options where option equal HTTP the new IP address 15171261168 done Sorry, I have an error, SQL syntax. Okay. As you can see, select enter. Not again. My syntax selected from WP options where I'm oh, sorry where of course option value okay as you can see inside our database we have option id one two and option name and also option value and right now we change that to the new this is the table inside our database so we change it to the new ip address as you can see, it's called site URL and home. Right now, it's uh, redirecting to the new IP address. <coughs> and that's it. Let's exit MySQL. Hello again, everyone. So in this lesson, we will setting up a domain name and configuring WordPress to use that domain name. So this is about domain name. Uh, I have an account in uh, name.com, so name.com is a good uh, website to search for a domain name, so you can search for it. For example, if I want uh, a domain name for cloud computing, uh, man, something like that, and click enter, it will show you, you can buy this domain for 9.99 so this uh, price is uh, based on yearly price so each year you should pay that amount or more it depends on the domain name and it will give you a lot of options so you can add to card and then buy it but right now I have a, a domain name I will go to my domain name so <clears throat> let's see I will go to this domain name, Arman Hadi. I bought this domain name, Arman Hadi. Okay. 
and I will click on manage DNS record. So it depends on your uh, website where you buy the domain name. So you can buy it from name.com or GoDaddy or any uh, domain provider. Uh, but they have also uh, all of them have uh, managed DNS. So I will come to manage DNS and you can add a record this uh, called a record. For example, I have this one with an IP address. This was before. So I will edit this one and update the IP address to the new IP address. Update. But for you, you should add it here. And for the www Arman Hadi, so it's different. ArmanHadi.com is different from www. So you should, uh, for the www one, write www here, and then the IP address. For me, I just update it like that. So you should have two type A record with the host, your domain, and www okay and the answer should be the ip address so let's go to armanhadi.com of course it will take time so that the dns know the tada right now i have my own website so you you should have your own website also of course but there is a small Thing you may notice you can see here it say not secure so this domain name we have it's HTTP so it's not HTTPS we will configure that in our server and we will install a SSL certificate for it then our uh, it will show it HTTPS so of course it's better to show it HTTPS because when a person see that not secure they are afraid of your website and in some uh, mobile application i think it will show that the the app is not secure so they think that's a hack or something like that so it's definitely recommended to make your website secure with a https ssl certificate right now we bought a domain name and we uh, create a DNS record for it and we got it. Hello again, everyone. In this lesson, we will create and attach new disk to our server. AWS make it really easy to add a new drive to your server. Note that in general, it's better to use just one SSD, okay? Just one large SSD for your AWS server rather than uh, small ones due to the way AWS infrastructure is designed. One large disk will probably get you a better speed than multiple smaller ones. But if you need extra space and you don't want to migrate your server your data to another server with a larger SSD. So you should attach a new disk or volume to your current server. One reason why you want to use an attached disk is that you want to create a backup that are not always accessible from your server. You would attach the disk to your server, okay? and put the backup on it and you can disattach it anytime you want it. So for now, let's see, we are in elastic block. As you can see, there is a volume button, click on it. Now what you are seeing is our own server disk, which is 30 gigabyte and type GP2. We will click on create volume 
and it will show us this. We want general purpose and gigabyte. For example, we want 20 available zone. You can encrypt it also, but we don't want that. So we will click on create volume and instantly it will create that volume for us. As you can see, 20 gigabyte volume. But now this, in, this volume is not attached to our server. So we should do that. And one note, if you create a volume, please create it in your own zone. So they are in the same zone for the speed. If not, if you create it in another zone, so this disk will be miles away from your server. So that affect performance, of course. Right now, I will select my disk, new disk, click on action. And here, what you see, create snapshot, create. Of course, you can name the disk so that later on you, uh, maybe you have 10 or 20 disks. So, so you remember, for example, we will call it backup, this one. We should wait for this to finish creating. Right now, what we are going to do, click on this and then actions and then attach volume. But as you can see, there is, it won't show us anything here, an instance. And actually we have an instance. Why? Because the zone, the availability zone for our new volume is US East 1A. But our instance, as you can see, this one is uh, for our instance, is on US East 1D. So what we should do, we can, we, of course, you can delete one, this one. Create a new volume, but now be aware of the zone, US East 1D, and click on Create. And change the name, of course. I'm waiting to finish creating. Available, click on it, attach. Right now, you are seeing the instance, of course, because they are both in the same uh, zone. Click on attach volume. Now, it show us in use. So the new volume now is attached to our instance, but we need to configure it inside our server to use it. Now open putty, log into the server. And here type, and here type LSBLK. It will show us the disk in our server. And you can see here we have NVMe LNL 20G. This mean this mean 20 gigabyte of uh, volume. We have it. As you can see, the name here for our NVMe this well we name it backup here so you understand that this name has nothing to do with that name okay so be aware of that this name came from the Ubuntu so the Ubuntu will name the disk for you by this name another way to see your new attached disk is ls slash dev we have a lot of things here but you can search for the name the name was nvme 
NVMe 1. NVMe, as you can see, NVMe 1N1. So this is our new disk. So right now, for us to use the new disk as a computer, if you use it inside your Windows or Mac uh, computer, if you have a new disk attached to your computer, so the first thing it will ask you is to format it. Okay, so we need to format the disk with this command. done our disk is formatted right now but be aware guys this name maybe is not nvme1 n1 for you so look at the name and for this command which we wrote right now dev slash nvme101 so it should be your uh, disk name not nvme101 because maybe it's different for for you if you have a different version of Ubuntu, maybe the Ubuntu name it a little differently. And now you should decide for the directory which you want to use your uh, attached disk on. So I will create a directory with this command. Of course, we will make directory. And I will call it AWS Backups. So next, I will mount this uh, storage the volume to that directory with this command mount dev n vme one n one slash to aws backups. This is space. Enter. Finish. Right now, the IW, the volume is mounted to our directory. So let's run this command. Ta-da! As you can see, the NVMe right now is mounted to the gigabyte. And of course, uh, it show that we use 1% of it and it's mounted on AWS backups. So we are done with attaching and mounting our disk. But maybe later on you want to uh, disattach this disk safely from your server. So what we you should do and mount slash minus D dev nvme oh, as you can see uh, because it should be sudo and mount enter sorry it's not and mount it's u mount Right now, if I do the command again, as you can see, I don't have my volume with this command df space minus h. It won't show us the new NVMe here, so it's not mounted. Okay, but of course, uh, we have our volume, but it's not mounted. Okay. As before, we can do this command. And as you can see, we have it, but not mounted. OK, so this is the way to disattach or unmount your disk safely. And of course, next, we can click on it. Action, detach volume, detach. Now, the volume 
is available to use, but it's not in use, like the main one. I hope this is really helpful to you, and uh, please continue to the next lecture. For now, bye. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this lesson, we will be creating another website, or to say a multiple website on the same server. The Apache web server support having multiple websites hosted on the same server IP address. If you have two domains, for example, example1.com and example2.com, when a user types either of this in the browser, Apache is able to see the request and make the different decision based on whether the user requested, for example, example1.com or example2.com. There is no limit on the number of websites you can set up with Apache on your instance. Some web hosting companies put hundreds of websites on a single server. So, to start, we will start what we did in last, uh, in previous lessons. So, we will go to var ww html here as you can see we have wordpress but right now we will do this step again to uh, to have a multiple website on our server so what i'm going to do i'm going to do the uh, steps we did before quickly okay sudo wget http so right now we got the uh, WordPress uh, zip file. First, I'm going to create an, another uh, folder. So right now, if I go to inside example2.com, I can see the WordPress uh, folder inside there. But I can change the, uh, the name. So As you can see, we have example. So right now, the example two is just an empty folder. So I'm gonna remove it. Okay, so to remove, you should write down the R. Okay. And also, I don't want this. Done. So right now I have the example and the WordPress. So this one is the new one. Uh, right now we are going to do the necessary thing. And one thing that we did before was to create a database. And right now we should do those step also. So
Right now I'm inside the database. I'm going to create a database. Create. We need to write down the password, of course, for this user also. So I will make it easy. Sorry, we have it's a Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have an error in our code. I should change it. Huh. Spell error. Okay. As you can see, Create user example user at Done. Cool. Privilege on Example to example user at localhost done. Right now. We are going to inside example and we have this file so we will copy it Done, we have WP config. Sorry. And sudo nano WP config.php. Database name was example. And then we need to cut 
this with control K uh, it's just cutting and then we should go to IPI dot WordPress this key copy it paste it here control X Y enter now it's saved then creating the with command touch create dot ht access file then sudo chown give the ownership of uh, apache for HD access. Now HD access is empty, but we can go to codex.wordpress.org.hd access and this is the new one copy this paste it here done now we configure the wordpress but right now we need to configure the uh, apache so that it can recognize both uh, both wordpress website we are going to etc apache2 here we'll go to site available as you can see we have the this uh, file before we configure it but that was just for one uh, website so what i'm gonna do is copy this file for example dot com dot conf okay so now i have this file also no no this is the new file so it won't be directed to this it will be to example And also, we need to add this is the new uh, syntax server name example.com and server alias done and for the first website which we have i'm gonna do copy sudo cp example i'm gonna copy it but this one to arman hadi because the my first domain name was armanhadi.com dot config so sudo nano Arman Hadi. Right now, for the name, this one will be and this one will be save it. For now, what we should do, we should enable this domain with this command, sudo a2 e-insight 
this one for example and sudo the same command but this time for the other one done and if you, we don't want the the default file the default file which i mean by this one we should do sudo a2 this site this time done then run sudo service apache2 restart done Ta -da. right now if I go to my website Arman Hadi like always it will open and uh, we have our website but uh, how I can go to my other website which is example.com but right now I don't have example.com actually Uh, I can go to the let's try the IP address no the IP address is actually going to my website so uh, we can add the host file in the Windows system 32 driver etc Hostess. I can add, for example, my IP address, which is this one, to here. It doesn't allow me to save it here, but we can do that actually. So I don't want to do that right here. We can click on property and security, edit. We don't have a right, so apply, yes okay okay right now open it again let's try it doesn't let us let this again property security done now it's saved so if I go to tada what's that this is for installing the new website so our server 
right now understand that example.com uh, is another website and Arman Hadi is another website and actually they are in the same IP address so you can build this one again the same step we did before so right now you have the ability to add hundreds of websites on the same server with the same IP address